Hello there guys, it's Anthony once again for Hell Dominance. Thank you very much for watching. Um, back today with more Rugby League news, this time from around the world. Uh, first stop today will be in the NARL, where we look at Eddie Pettibon's first interview as a Brooklyn Kings player. Then we go on to Swinton, Featherston and York's valiant efforts in their Challenge Cup ra uh, second round. Then we follow that up with the Brits Down Under, an in-depth look at the British players playing rugby league down in the NRL. And finally we continue our quest for 100 subscribers in our race to 100, where that you could be one of the lucky recipients of our Hell Dominus t-shirts. Before we begin though, Please like and subscribe and click that notification bell for as much rugby league news as we can find for you. So as we begin we have a look at Eddie Pettibon's uh, interview into um, playing rugby league around the world and also going to um, Brooklyn Kings as the, as the first major signing for the league. Um, he was speaking to uh, Colleen Clayweg of talk, uh, Team Talk and Re the Red Star Network um, over in Serbia uh, and uh, spoke to Petter Barn who was thankful of all the family support about the travelling here, there and everywhere and he says it's beneficial as his family is, is a young one at this moment in time so that they can have all these worldly experiences as a kid uh, and grow up in a great place. Um, he spoke about in um, passion, well, with passion about representing the USA, his grand playing rugby league around the world was. Now, guys, we go on to the uh, Challenge Cup rounds of the weekend and a decent look at the three standout lower league sides that put up a good fight against their upper league opposition. We're first going to look at Swinton and then their efforts against Warrington Wolves because Warrington Wolves coach Steve Price slammed his team um, the team's display against the Swinton Lions uh, branding it acceptable as, as they were losing 8 points to 4 for a large part of the game. He said collectively his team must be better but um, pays respect to um, Swinton because of their fantastic attitude. Uh, they gave it a real good go to unsettle uh, Warrington, which does say a lot to um, what sort of team Swinton put, uh, played at the, at the weekend. Um, because Warrington went over Martin Ridyard, 20 points to Matty Ashton, sorry, converted. So our next team we're going to look at are Featherston versus Hull um, in the Betford Challenge Cup as well. Um, where at first you thought it was going to be a whitewash because of the hard time score for Hull FC was 34 points to 4. Um, but Featherston won the second half 10 points to 0 uh, through some decent defence some inventive attacking play um, Brett Ferris got on the on the score sheet for a decent a decent kick through uh, Dane Chisholm and it was a fantastic effort from Featherston in the second half whether that was tempered because of um, Hull being so far ahead and they weren't risking any injuries uh, for their Super League clash against Warrington uh, in, in this weekend coming or uh, this weekend just gone, whatever the score was. Um, at the point of this, at the point of this uh, recording, it is the next weekend. But when you receive this recording, it will be next weekend. So it would have got uh, the Warrington versus Hull game should have already been played. So looking at it, um, there were some very, very good uh, performances in the second half through Featherston. As I said, it might have been due to Hull um, taking a step back, but to win the second half against a Super League side who have not been beaten yet in the first three rounds of the Super League and also now the Challenge Cup is a very credible, credible effort. Credible effort. Um, they have some good players, uh, ball playing players like Dane Chisholm. And also, um, Brett Ferris was very, very good throughout the entire night and was a leader for the team all the way through. Uh, where 
and also uh, the winger Ben Bratmore um, was also uh, on form. He was very good with, with, with the hit ups and picking up the ball and running at players. Uh, the 28 year old from Castleford um, has also, also played for his whole town club and also Huddersfield Giants. Big unit and caused a lot of trouble because he was you know, his tough, elusive, and sometimes direct running. And did really, really well for Featherston uh, the other night. And finally, our last team that we're looking at uh, for this little review is Jane, James Ford's York City Knights, um, who who the coach Ford was expressing his pride as through his injury hit squad went toe to toe with the Betfred Super League Giants Wigan Warriors in a 26 nil Betfred Cup Challenge Cup defeat. Yes, they got nilled, and, um, and there wasn't too much to worry about for Wigan on the attacking front, but this was a very, very, very depleted York side. You were missing 12 first team players for the visit of the, of the Wigan Warriors at the LNER Community Stadium, which is a, the first game that York Knights have actually played there in the Challenge Cup. And, and to welcome someone this big, like Wigan Warriors, to the stadium um, gives it a good, good christening, shall we say. Um, they're an absolutely st outstanding Super League club, Wigan said of, um, this Wigan was set up by James Ford, uh, and they uh, are challenged for every Super League ch team, let alone a challenge, uh, a championship team. Uh, there was, uh, he was so happy with uh, his team, uh, they completed uh, 10 out of the 11 sets in yardage, uh, they moved better out of they moved it better out of the yardage uh, than they did against Toulouse. This was just a summary of what um, James Ford actually said about his charges. Um, he wasn't going too much to call out individual performances uh, because he had two 17-year-olds in the team, um, which if you saw Jackson Hastings. Um, picture on in, on Twitter you would have seen him um, with his arms draped around these young lads welcoming them, welcoming them to the first team in a rugby league game and they had all the hearts and the pride that any team put together which was said put to be put together the night before the game so this was played on Friday night so Thursday night they were told Yep, we got 17 that are fit, and these are the 17. Let's play them. So, um, that's what James Ford actually told the commentary team, and the commentary team actually mentioned that on commentary, not conveniently. Um, so, of course, he was delighted for his boys, and out of the three, I would say um, Swinton's was the one that stands out a bit more for myself. Um, because of the competitiveness he seemed to have through the full 80 minutes as Featherston started they started a bit late in the game their mentality wasn't in the right frame um, where York the only tips York to my number one in the performances of the weekend because Swinson scored points. Not bias or anything like that, but uh, because it's two Yorkshire teams and one Lancashire team, and I'm a Lancashire lad. It's just that it seemed like they were more competitive throughout the game, to, to me, compared to the other two boys, Feverson starting late, and also York not being able to put any points on the board. That's the only differences between the three performances. They all have a good, good, positive um, way to keep their heads high, so that they can go on and commit full tilt to the championship season and to get in those playoffs to compete to get it to the Super League.
And finally, we're looking to our um, boys down under uh, as we look at how the Brits are focusing in the NRL and how well they're playing and what's going on for them. And uh, there seems to be uh, some very, very good information out there on how they're getting on. Uh, we start today with Tom Burgess at South Sydney Rabbitohs uh, for their win against Brisbane on Thursday. Uh, that was Thursday the 8th of June. Um, he's put to, he said that, looking at all the reports, it says it's an incredible effort, powerful running, and he bulldozed his way to 233 metres at eight and 85 pulse contact meters as South Sydney proved too much for the Broncos to handle. In a game that was made even more special by the fact that he was old. So finally is our race to 100 promotion where we're trying to get 100 subscribers as soon as possible. And for that, uh, for you following me on Twitter, getting all these videos and subscribing, um, there will be some uh, Hell Dominance merchandise sent out to you. A free t-shirt um, in the size that you you want. Um, all that you do is you type in the comments, done, exclamation mark, hashtag race to 100, plus your UK size of t-shirt as seen on Twitter, as seen on Twitter for those t-shirts. Uh, I will then and once we get to that 100 stage, I will ask you guys, to the lucky 10 recipients, to get in touch with me on Twitter via a direct message, and uh, we'll talk. We'll get all, I will then get all the details together from you to um, have that it said T-shirt delivered to you um, as soon as possible. So yeah. Get me to 100 subscribers because I also have plans for 250 and a thousand. But it's up to you guys to follow up. Anyway, that has been me and a little bit of the roundup for today. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, our dominance is the place to follow all your rugby league news. So, in the meantime, enjoy the rest of your day and bye for now.